So now it's time for some breaking news. Alright everybody, we're diving right in as always, and the first thing I want to talk about very quickly is Stranger Things. Now Stranger Things, I've been wondering, everybody's talking about like, Season five's coming up, we talked about the musical before, but Season 5 hasn't even started shooting yet, everybody. Hasn't even started shooting. So you've had a long time to wait for Stranger Things final season. Hopper actually was talking about it, and he was saying that, you know, it's a different season. Like, I'm going to call him Hopper. Screw it. He said it's a new season. He said his character is actually, like, not in jail anymore. So he's going to put a little, a little bit of weight on for this new season. And he says it's time for the show to end. As a lot of cast think it is, it's time for the next chapter in their careers, their lives, and for us to finally get a fulfilling ending to the story. So it's coming. We don't know when. Like I said, they're starting in June. So they're probably going to have five months of shooting, post-production. We're probably going to get this until next year for sure. So... You know, hold on to your seats. It's coming, but not yet. Something that is doing great, though, that is happening is Cocaine Bear. I just love talking about Cocaine Bear. Why not? We just keep bringing it up. So Cocaine Bear now has made its money back. It has made $52 million right now globally. $30 million budget. That's a pretty good win for Elizabeth Banks' first rectoral debut. It's pretty huge. And a movie about a, a, a bear drug down on cocaine killing people. I mean, hell. Seems pretty good. It seems to go in. So they made uh yeah, 14.1 million globally and the rest out here, 52 million over here. So yeah, it's it's great. I think it's a great movie, and I think people have liked it. So keep it going. Cocaine Bear, not gonna stop. And something going away is Rachel Ray. That kind of rhymed, didn't it? Rachel going Ray is away. going away. <laughs> Rachel Ray. <laughs> So Rachel Ray has had a talk show for 17 seasons. Wow, and I, I'm, that's <laughs> forever. That's generations for, in Hollywood time. Oh, my God. It blows my mind. Uh, daytime syndication, everybody. Uh, but they've had a considerable decline in ratings in the past few years. No, and daytime, she, TV, daytime TV? No. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. And she's working on the Food Network. So she's got her own stuff going. And she just says, you know, I have other opportunities, other jobs. I think it's time for this to go away. Step aside. It's been a great run. I mean, 17 fucking years. That's that's pretty awesome, actually. Her, her audience is going to follow her wherever she goes. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know why she would even bother with terrestrial TV at all. Like, she could Ooh, terrestrial TV. Anything. Terrestrial, yeah. Because, <laughs> because the broadcast waves follow along the ground. <laughs> yeah. they, 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 creep, they creep into your house through the gutters. Mm -hmm. Streamline in and yeah. attack you in your sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Um, just, just like Rachel Ray. Just like Worse Rachel Ray. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy for her. She had a good run, though. I was shocked when I heard she was still on. This is not really my cup of tea. I'm not really demographic for this, I guess. But if you loved Rachel Ray, this is a sad day for you. because you're. Your, uh, what's your Snoop Dogg collaboration coming out, man? Uh, 2025. 2025? <laughs> Dude, put that on the books because it's going to happen. <laughs> If it happens, that would be awesome if it's actually in 2025. I would yeah. laugh pretty hard. <laughs> well, as she's going away, something that's happening for the very first time, which was actually pretty awesome. If you watched the uh, Cinematographer Awards last night, uh, big, big award went through. We're talking about the best visual storytelling in a feature film award. For the very first time, it went to a female DP for the production of Elvis. That's right. Elvis won for best storytelling in a feature award and this was by mandy walker now she's the very first female to win this award and she said this is for all the females in the future they get nominated and for all the future females that actually win and she's doing this for them and for all everybody that's ever had a chance to be a cinematographer for a female it's it's a big win it's huge it's huge and elvis is very breathtaking if you watch that movie the cinematography is fantastic so this makes sense to me she's also up for the oscar too so who knows maybe she'll win that too but of course, cinematographers, their their awards, they don't have as many categories. So it's very big to win this, you know? It's huge. So I'm very excited to hear this. And um, I was, you know, I think it's great for 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 crew across the board. I think it's great for women that do this job that you don't get this opportunity, you know? I think it's awesome. And, and, and it really shows cool. it. If That's you've cool. seen That's this really movie, great. it shows yeah. though, right? Yeah, yeah, look, it's, it looks excellent. Yeah. So I mean it makes sense it does, for me yeah. that she win this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we'll see what other awards this movie gets at the actual Oscars. But for a cinematographer, it's like this is like cha-ching, you know, it's great. So yeah. hopefully it leads the way for more women in the future to have this opportunity because, mm -hmm. hey, her work shows. It shows that she knows what the hell she's doing and she deserves it. So, yeah. So as she's doing that, something else that is coming back 
is another alien movie. Yep, another alien movie. Yeah. Now, we talked before about an alien TV series. That's still happening. There's an alien the TV script. series happening, but there's also an alien movie, everybody. These are totally separate. They're not going to interact. They're their own worlds. And the director said it's going to um, it's going to bring life into this. He's, the director is from uh, Don't Breathe and 2013's Evil Dead. He directed that as well. Oh, and, yeah, that's, uh, he, that's a good that's a good fit with the alien vibe, man. I yeah, like Fetty Alvarez, you know. Yeah. yeah, like I think it makes sense. He's a forty, uh, you know, it's a forty-three year old franchise. So I think it's freaking nuts. Jimmy. But R- Ridley Scott is actually Holy producing cow. it. Of course, he is. Ridley Scott's like, hell yeah, I'll be involved with this, you know. And um, you know, he did the pre- he did the prequel series, he did Prometheus, he did the original Aliens. Like he's been and wrapped up in this whole world forever. And as I said, this is not going to connect with Hulu's FX. Uh, TV series in 2023. But they're saying in this ninth entity in the immense, uh, it's going to be uh, in the future, and it, uh, a group of young people on a distant world find themselves in the confrontation with the most terrifying life form in the universe. So <laughs> not, very, very vague. I feel like a lot of these, you know, Super initial. Vague. Get ready, That's Elon. Thing. Yeah, like, all the, oh, all these there's, initial... there's a scary monster. Look out, everybody. Watch out. Aliens yeah. coming, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Lurking in it's, a crater. <laughs> it's right. so you would think when you announce something like this, you'd actually have more to say, you know, as opposed to like we're doing this. So either here's... they don't have anything or they're just trying to be evasive because they've got a big one to drop on us. Right? Hopefully, hopefully yeah, Huge. hopefully they've got big, big uh ideas to drop <laughs> on us. That would be great. Right. Yeah, I hope so. Of course, it's on a different planet. That's going to be fun. Usually they're on a spaceship or, you know, all the aliens have fought the predators on Earth before. That's about it. You know what I mean? But I, I still like that movie. I still think that was fun. And the Prometheus ones went off world too, but it wasn't like this. To me, this sounds like they're probably going to have another civilization. Maybe humankind branches off to a new planet and the aliens come and attack. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But can, it's coming, can everybody. Can we do a spinoff episode? I would love to. There's been so many alien incarnations now. Like, I would really love just to talk about these movies because they've been so much throughout the development of American civilization. And I can easily see, like, oh, you're talking about uh, evil, an Evil Dead director, which was pretty right. like they were clearly already influenced by aliens. So we're talking about alien influencing Evil Dead, influencing alien. Like, it's it's really cool and there's a lot of stuff so i i it's just sorry sorry to bug everybody i just think that that's something that we could talk about forever because i we totally massive, could i'm a massive fan of the franchise and even the movies that people aren't massive fans of and i'm trying to think there's another show recently with a bunch of cyborgs that was really great great too that they canceled so yeah i mean i love that stuff i love the science fiction you know it's, it's awesome mm-hmm. and, and even you're talking about evil dead Uh, Bruce Campbell just recently announced, I think it was yesterday or today, that he said that they're working on an animated movie where he would come back to play Ash. So he says his voice, he says, he goes, my voice is still about the same age, but my body is not. (laughs) So so that's why he said he can't be physically Ash anymore, but he'll do his voice again. Him and Sam Raimi are working on it. So you never know. It might be something great too coming. I'd be down for that. I would totally be down for that. Um, something else that's coming back. Now, this is something I didn't really hear about before, but apparently there was a show called The Windsors that took place in the UK. Now they're coming back. The Windsors are coming back for what? King Charles's coronation. That's right. They're going to make a special making fun of his coronation because like, why not? They, they apparently made fun of the royal family for three seasons. And so now they said, let's have a revival just because. You know, he's, he's taking the, he's taking the crown. So let's have some fun. So comedian Harry Enfield is the one that's behind this. Uh, he's going to unleash chaos ahead of the coronation in May. Uh, this is a channel four comedy apparently. So the Windsors is returning for this coronation special and uh, taking and making fun of the uh, monarch. For me, they said they're also going to bring in their actors who play Harry and Megan. Apparently they have cast members that have played them. They're also being kind of sly on social media being like, we don't know if we can show up or not. We might miss this one as if they're playing the part, Come you know, yeah. I, I know they first launched in 2016 with this show. Like I said, it spawned three seasons, two specials and a musical stage production as well. And the last time they were on was in 2021. So they're coming back for this because it's a good time for some comedy, they think. So 
And of course, <laughs> Harry and Meghan have been in the news constantly, as we've been talking about before. They don't go away. And they just lost their home, their, their vacation house in the UK. The king took away their vacation home. He actually gave them the boot. He said, we're foreclosing on you or some shit. I'm like, well, I, I'm I, like hate, I hate it when the, when the king just phones up to take away your vacation home. Jake, <laughs> yeah. don't you hate that shit? I know. Don't it happened last shit? week. Yeah. And man. then, well, like. I was halfway there too. I was like on the road with everything packed <laughs> and they're just like, no, you can't. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> hey, Turn hey, your yeah. ass around. Go home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to get that. No more no, vacation for you. It's, it's, it's vacay. It's vacay in California. Stay there now in your $30 million home. That's, that's good enough for you. <laughs> yeah. Slum it in your $30 million home. Yeah. This stuff is never going to go away. But I thought it was funny that they're, you know, of course this stuff's <laughs> happening. Like we talked about South Park before was making fun of Harry and Meghan because of their whole situation too. You know, their, you know, their I, privacy I tour. I them, man. I'm, I'm your uh, you did. You the did. Royals guy. <laughs> Remember? You're gonna, you, I, have you are. Back you are. Mike, what I, do you think? Is it good they're making fun of them or do you think that they should leave them alone? Uh, these are not mutually exclusive options. That's great they're making fun of them <laughs> because, because Scout, South Park is making money on it. It's great that these royals are complaining on multiple media outlets because we're giving their attention and that's selling advertising dollars so why the shit would they not be doing it like <laughs> yeah. good for good for them it's it's our fault for enabling basically it's it's a codependent relationship between uh between um uh the american public and the wealthy <laughs> so I don't know how much I can get into that right now, but it's, I blame myself is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> he took it away to give it to his, <laughs> his oh, pedo yeah. brother. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> also, also, also hi, Rachel. <laughs> thanks, hi, Rachel. For, uh, thanks for being there. You got some good ones going on. I'm going to do my best with the chat here too, because Sabrina's not here and she usually runs the chat. So I'll do my best with it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's, it's too funny. It's just too funny. Of course, they're going to make fun of it. I mean, it's, it leads to humor, doesn't it? You see this stuff like it just leads to humor. So there's going to be more things like this coming. Mike, you are being held captive. That's what Rachel said too. Are you being held captive? Oh yeah, <laughs> this is my trunk. Did you, were you not? Oh wait, I, I talked about that beforehand. This is a, uh... I, I constructed a an audio booth. This is what I'm recording in. That's why I sound, why I, my voice sounds so mellifluous <laughs> in here. I don't I don't want to pull the blankets off of it, but it's a it's a she's very, look, very she, sophisticated. She also says it looks like Mike's in someone's trunk. <laughs> again, again, when I'm talking about things aren't mutually exclusive, we, one one can record inside of the trunk while one is being held captive. Like, make, the best, make the best of a challenging situation, and that's why I support the Royals. Yeah, yeah, you can support the Royals, you know, or hate the Royals. I mean, yeah, and that's why people are, you know, people are just like people are gonna make fun of them. It's just what it is. But you know what? People also make fun of Pokemon all the time, too. But doesn't stop a detective Pokemon, Detective Pikachu, to come out. Oh, number two. That's right. We're getting a second Detective Pikachu coming out. And I actually liked the first one quite a bit. It was Hell fun. yeah. Ryan Hell Reynolds yeah. did a great job being the voice of Pikachu. Hilarious. But the thing is, they're not really sure if he's coming back this time. They're saying that because of his schedule, it's he's not confirmed yet. The director, again, new director too, Portlandia's co-creator Jonathan Kresel is uh, is apparently taking over the directorship uh, for directorship for the uh, Detective Pikachu sequel. And like I said, yeah, it works. So I a new director. They're they're actually in early stages. There's no plot, nothing like that. They just announced it's coming. So if you like the original, which I, I think it was pretty freaking good, it's funny, then you'll probably be excited about this. So more Pika Pika coming your way <laughs> pika, pika. it was so it pika, was pika. so good dude i did not expect i didn't i had maybe I, it's because i had no expectations and expectations going into that movie but it yeah, was intensely neither. good like i went to see it by myself in an empty theater at 7 30 in the morning and nice. I, maybe that had had some effect on it but that that movie was that movie was crazy good like and you know if they have any of the people involved on it and the like it looked Beautiful. It looked great. It looked really yeah. good. It, like, and all the P, all the Pokemons were awesome. They looked they looked fantastic. They did a good job mm -hmm. with the CGI mixture, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> Brian for uh, did you say Brian for Pikachu? I'll take a Pikachu. <laughs> Pika Pika, <Man>. let's go. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is coming. If you liked it, uh, Jake, I know you haven't seen this, but it's something you should check out because it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. It really is. Oh, you, it's you, a fun. You, you, haven't, you haven't seen the first one, Jake? No, I have not. It's no. it's actually good. I would actually recommend it. Like you okay. don't even have to suspend your your whole you know forebrain that much. Like it's actually okay. a pretty good movie in and of itself. Like and it's beautiful too. So nice. yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, check yeah, out so the second one is going to be really cool. And Ryan Reynolds was hilarious in it. He did a great job. So I hope they get him back. If they don't, I'll do it. You know, whatever. Talk about that. Yeah. Somebody that I think what is uh, something else I don't like. Everybody, I'm gonna say it right now, and that's the new Flash season. Now, this is the last season, and they're bringing in Batgirl as the villain, but she's like Batgirl, Flash Girl from a different universe. Uh oh. And and you know, <laughs> it's the Red Death. It's the Red Death. That's the character she's playing. If you know the comics, usually Bruce Wayne is the Red Death, but they're switching it up, which is fine. That's great. You know, it's like Batgirl's established in this CW universe, so it makes sense narratively. And she's good. She's a good actor. I think she does a great job. But the way they did this, okay. Okay, everybody. The way they did this. So the first time she takes off her mask, she throws in the, they say, who are you? And she goes, I am vengeance. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're going you're gonna to go Battinson on us? Yeah. You're going Battinson on us. So they pulled the, 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 uh, the <laughs> they pulled from the Batman and they had her do the, I am vengeance. And they had that whole story as opposed to being on Batman. And it's like, are you trying to say that that she kind of falls into the CW Battinson world? Are they are they the same world, or is it the tease like. for the fans? And then also, if, if 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 that is the case, cool. But also, are you just trying to do like a little nod to the Battinson fans? I don't know. But to me, I'm like, it just seemed cheesy. I was like, really, your vengeance? And then she started quoting like she like she went into the Battinson kind of brooding thing, and she's like, oh, she gets into her whole thing like Battinson did. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm this and I'm that, and I am the dark that will kill the night. And I will, you know what I mean? I'm like, fuck, really? This is what you're doing. This is what you're doing. And it's the very last season, so I get it's a big mm. bad in a way. You know, it's it's a crossover thing too, which they love to do with the CW. But for me, I'm just like, I just feel like it just doesn't. I mean, you can't keep doing the reverse flash every fucking season, though, which they do every season, it seems like, on that show. So at least yeah, it's something you know, different. If you're, if, if you're the CW, <laughs> like. I guess you can, sorry, you know? I, I wanted to hop on that burning bridge with you, Brian. <laughs> I burn it down. I wa I've watched every season of The Flash, so I, I'm, I'm part of the problem. I'm still watching it, you know? But, you know. <laughs> You're like building it as you're lighting it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm on that bandwagon too, but I, you know, yeah. for me personally, I'm still like, this is still going, I guess I'm still watching. I love their crossover stuff. So maybe this will lead to a good crossover, but to me, I, you know, most of the cast have left at this point. We know it's time for this show to move on. This is its last season. As I've said before, I think the craziest thing in the world is that they start pre-production on the flash movie when season one was starting of the flash TV show for the CW. And now nine seasons later, the bat or the flash, the bat flash movies coming out now, finally. So it's weird. They did nine seasons of a television show in the same time. Took one movie, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes in Hollywood. DC, DC has, yeah. you know, they're, they don't know what they're doing at all. And I no, think, the viewing, no. I think I, the viewing public is aware of that. And they're, I tell you, dollar. And that's gonna be up next. Like, yeah, that's that movie that. is gonna be <laughs> sick, though. That movie is gonna be super sick. I know it'll be great. You know, I'm excited for it. So the the, the Bat Flash movie, and they just they, did a poll online did saying, oh, they yeah, did a poll oh, dude, online. Yeah. Oh, that that trailer is really good, isn't it? It's really yeah, good. it's it's really freaking good. Yeah. It's really good. Keaton's killing it. Even though were they pushing on his face and he says, "I'm Batman," I'm like, yeah, I'm down for that. I'm really down for that. Like it's it's a big like wink nod to the fans and stuff in the trailer, but it's fun, you know. It's cheesy. And, it's nostalgia. It's, it's yeah. just fascism coming for you at home, like appealing to, <laughs> yeah. appe appealing to the fact like, oh, you wish it was back like when you were a kid when ice cream cones cost a nickel and you could hop into a stranger's car on the highway. They were but safe. it's not. Yeah, you, were safe. you were safe. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no cracks in the uh, sidewalk, folks. Uh, too, you walk too wherever good. you want to. Too good. Yeah. Uh, but they did a poll online. It was today, and they were saying, who is the best Batman? They did it across mm. the whole U.S. And who won? Keaton. Keaton wow. won. So the majority of the United States said that Keaton is the best Batman. So welcome back, Michael Keaton. Though?